Now we're going to pivot to some legal stories, and we start with a bizarre one, and it's about bail. An Alabama judge, well, let's just say he's got a unique and controversial way to let people who can't afford bail stay out of jail. He's telling them, donate a pint of blood in lieu of payment. He's not a vampire, he's just bizarre. Okay, people getting locked up because they cannot afford bail is a real problem and a growing one, and it's a topic we've covered extensively here on this program, and you can find links to an RFL special report that we call Jail or Bail uh, that we did on the, uh, and you can, in fact, you can go to the Richard French Live Facebook page and check it out yourself. That's what is happening to one David Owens. He spent six weeks on Rikers Island because he couldn't make the $3,500 bail. Now, Owens works for Macy's, and he worked there when he was arrested in 2012 for allegedly stealing a backpack from someone on the subway. He claims police arrested him because he fit the vague description of a black guy wearing a hoodie. Now, that case is eerily similar to the case of Khalif Browder, if you remember. Again, a topic and a story we talked about in this program. That teenager spent nearly three years at Rikers because he couldn't post $3,000 in bail. He was accused of, wait for it, stealing a backpack. Never convicted of anything, but he sat in jail for all that time. In fact, Prado was offered on more than one occasion, just plead guilty here and we'll let you go. He refused to because he said he didn't do it. Sadly, Prado committed suicide at his Bronx home this past summer. He was 22 years of age. All right, I want to bring our legal panel to weigh in on this. Neil Comer, he's a criminal defense attorney, and Mayo Bartlett, an attorney at the law offices of Mayo Bartlett PLC, and he's also former chief of the Bias Crimes Unit at the Westchester County DA's office. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank and, you. You're welcome. Uh, I'm sure both of you guys um, can put names to cases like this for guys you've dealt with, for, for people who don't know Mayo, and they say, wait a minute, you're accused of stealing a backpack, okay? Nobody's alleging there was a gun, nobody alleging anybody got hurt, there was a stolen backpack, and certainly he even, I don't want to get too much in the way of facts, but he had a pay stub that he said, I can prove I was at work when this happened, but let's not even let facts get in the way of a story. People assume, okay, you, you go to the PD, um, you, you, know, you sign your name or whatever else, somebody comes, bails you out, and then you show up for your court date. Nobody thinks you spend six weeks or three years in Rikers, but these aren't just anomalies. This happens, right? It happens every day. I, had, uh, I was in Queens the other day, uh, down at Queens Criminal Court, and they were arraigning people for the very first time. So they had an attorney who was a duty attorney who was there just to make sure that people had an attorney for arraignment. And people were taking pleas, getting 15 days in jail without having anybody look at their case and really go through the details of the case, challenge the case. Uh, you had people who weren't able to post bail. Some of them looked like they were homeless or that they certainly didn't have a lot of money. And bail would be set at $500. But if you don't have any money, $500 is the equivalent of a remand and just saying we're going to put you in jail. And what's lost is uh, the presumption of innocence is totally thrown out the window there. Uh, bail's supposed to ensure that you come back to court. Most of these people have had ties to the community. They're not going to run away and not come back to court. It's one thing if the person has a history of not coming to court, bench warrants, things like that. But what we also miss is it's extremely expensive for us to have somebody in jail. So even assuming somebody maybe, uh, let's assume the person is guilty, okay? but they stole $100 worth of, of goods. For us to spend tens of thousands or, or twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for that person to sit in jail or for us to spend $5,000 on a marijuana case where the, the fine could only be $100 defies logic. That's money that could be spent on education and now you're taking this young man away from his job so mm. Sears or Macy's may not be waiting for him so now we may be supporting him in other ways because when he finally gets out in addition to any trauma he may have, he may be unemployed. Neil, there's an effort to fix the system. Um, Judge Lippman, um, mm -hmm. the retiring Chief Justice, we've spoken to him at length about this. He says this, there's got to be a better way than this, and he's had some suggestions. Why is it so hard to fix? It doesn't seem that anybody benefits from this. It seems like it ties up the courts, mm -hmm. certainly ties up the jails for guys who don't necessarily, there's better uses of prison cells in Rikers than for these guys. Sure. Um, and, you know, maybe it runs up some legal bills, but it's not like these guys are going to be paying a ton to any attorney who takes the case, I got a feeling, right? Well, the vast, vast majority, well over 95% of all the criminal cases that come in in this county as well as in the city are all assigned counsel or legal aid anyway, so nobody's privately getting yep. paid, and they're not paying for their defense. 
But why is it so hard to fix? Why did it take Judge Lippman all these years to suddenly wake up two months before he's leaving office and decide the bail system needs to be fixed? He could have done this five years ago, six years ago. He's been the chief judge for a long time, and in many ways, he's been a pretty good one. But this is an issue that should have been dealt with years ago. Part of the problem, and we see this in a way is emblematic of what happened in the Eric Garner case. Why in the world are they arresting a guy for selling loose cigarettes? They have this thing called a desk appearance ticket. That's the kind of case they always gave a desk appearance ticket. Then why, why do they have to take him down? I think it comes from the top in a way. Maybe the police commissioner and his chief advisors in the city are saying, let's arrest everybody. No more DATs. That's how we'll stop some of this local crime. But I think we should go back to that system. If a guy is not violent and he's not dangerous and it's a petty crime, give him a ticket, especially if you can establish you know where he lives. He's got some identification on him. And those police officers knew Garner. He was not a stranger in that neighborhood. He lived there. And he'd been living there forever, really. Now, does this happen more often? I mean, you mentioned a recent case. But for folks who think these are outliers, that it happens a lot, right? Because also you have this image there's a bail bondsman that if you can't come up with it, he'll hook you up and you'll get back to him later. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. And, and what will happen is you have to, you may have assets even. Let's assume you have assets. If you can't get to those assets, it doesn't really matter. You're sitting in jail. And in New York City, you're, it's such a big system that you can get lost in that jail. Uh, but the other thing is, let's assume that everybody's operating in good faith here, that the DA sees it's a minor charge and they ask for a low bail. The judge sets a low bail. At $500 for most people in, in the tri-state area is going to be a low bail. But it's if not it's 500, fair. do you have to come up with all that may, or even 10%? Generally, you have to come up with everything. Yeah. In a higher bails, normally, if you start talking about 2,500, 5,000 and up, then they'll give you a bond alternative, or they can give you a bond alternative, which would be 10%. But for some folks, they can't come up with 500 bucks, right? Right, and if you don't own any property, I mean, you don't have any collateral. So a bondsman is not going to come in and give, give you a bond if you don't have anything that's tangible that he or she can go after if you decide not to come back to court. But then you also have uh, the reality that a lot of our towns in New York State are prison towns. So if the prison didn't exist in that town, the town itself very well might not exist. It's almost like a company town, but the company is the jail, and everybody works at the jail, and it's the jail that allows you to have the malls and the supermarkets and all of these things. So there still is a profit incentive in law enforcement, and that needs to be totally removed. Mm -hmm. And as you said before, you've had experiences where you're just trying to even meet your client, right? In something as simple as a case where you know you, if you get to a court, uh, you're going to get the thing dismissed, but you can't even get the client in front of you, let alone get a, an appearance in front, of, in front of a judge. All right, now, when we come back, guys, there's a case here um, that a lot of people probably remember, um, if not from the headlines, from the movie. It was a crime caper so huge and so sensational, featured in Goodfellas. Now, the Goodfellas allegedly involved in Lufthansa heist they're in court, even though the $6 million theft happened back in 1978. Why did it take so long? We got a great story for you.